Today will be a day to remember for the rest of your life. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is excited to present the heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. With over 100 Hall of Famers participating, we have reached 47 states and countries all over the world, sharing the message that football is more than a game and can teach Americans important life values like commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence. But you have to make right decisions even when nobody's watching you. Well, respect is not just given out. It's not handed out like a, like a, like a brochure. It's earned. Today, you are presented with an opportunity to meet and learn from one of the greatest football players of all time. But more important than that, the chance to see that their Hall of Fame life wasn't given to them. They didn't roll out the bed great. They put the work in, on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom, in their communities. They made themselves a Hall of Famer on and off the field. Your feet can't take you where your mind's never been. Because you can make it, but it's just gonna take a little hard work, and some effort, and the drive and determination. And today, you will learn you can do the same thing they did. You don't have to have a gold jacket or a bronze bus to make a difference in the lives of others. It's your decision whether you want to be a successful student, son, daughter, brother, or sister. If attitudes are contagious, is your attitude worth catching? It's integrity as well, because when you decide to pursue something and you don't quit, that says a lot about you. Commitment to excellence. We can all aspire to be the best. Welcome to a once in a lifetime program, the heart of a Hall of Famer program connected by Extreme Networks. Uh, coming up with nine brothers and sisters, uh, didn't have very much materially. We had a lot of love in our home. Uh, parents had third and fourth grade education, couldn't go to school because they had to work and provide for us. I was the first generation uh, to be able to go to school on uh, athletic scholarship uh, from the encouragement of my coach. I he used to rob me home every night and tell me that I can do whatever I want to do. I said, well, coach, I got nine brothers and sisters. I don't have any money. How am I going to go to school? He said, if, if you keep playing like you're playing, you can go to college. Um, I had no concept of, uh, of uh, going to college, but uh, he sowed seeds of encouragement in me. and. Uh, and made me believe that I could do it. Coach Johnson saw in me the, uh, a great determination to, to, to get the job done with whatever I did, not only in the football field, but also in the classroom or what, uh, whatever I was doing. I did not see that in me. So my message is to coaches and teachers and mentors, make sure that you encourage, when you see something in a young person, encourage them because they don't always see it. Please do not let obstacles, trials, unforeseen circumstances deter you from accomplishing your dreams and goals you set for yourselves. In closing, we in the United States must become servant leaders. And a great example of that all my 14 years and still today is the steel organization of being a servant leader. A servant leader is one who is motivated by love and humility, but demonstrated by example. And that's what we need to do. May God bless you. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to welcome all those students in front of us, as well as all the students who are tuning in on Facebook Live to another installment of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Heart of a Hall of Famer series connected by Extreme Networks. Our mission here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame is to honor the heroes of the game, to preserve its history, to promote its values, and to celebrate excellence together. And those values we promote are those of commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty. All of our, those values made our Hall of Famers great football players, Hall of Famers on the field. But more importantly, they made them Hall of Famers off the field. Great dads, brothers, sons, members of their community. At one point in their lives, they made them better students, just like everybody we have here today. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about those values today and how they made our special guest's career both great on and off the field. My name is Jake Gray. I'm the Youth and Education Manager here at the Hall of Fame, and I'll be the one up here asking the questions, but more importantly, our students here in the room today, you're going to get the opportunity to ask some questions as well. 
Before we get into kind of how the program will run, uh, first I need to have some thank yous. First off, I'd like to thank our folks at Extreme Networks, the sponsor of this event, for all the great work that they do for us here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and truly all the great work they do for schools all over the country. I uh, could not have this program today without their gracious, gracious support. Secondly, I'd like to thank our teachers, administrators, educators, anybody that's either watching online today or we're grateful enough to bring their students here to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And then lastly, students, gotta thank you. This program isn't gonna happen today without you guys. You guys are gonna get the opportunity to ask a question to a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Maybe the only time in your life you get to do that, so, so don't take it for granted. Really pay attention today to some of the great words that our guest has to share today. So today we have schools in attendance. Uh, our schools are Perry High School, A.J. Rickoff Middle School, Wyndham High School, we have students from Richmond Heights, Maple Heights, McKinley, Kenmore Garfield, and Bishop Canavan. And I hope I said that right for our special guest uh, from Pittsburgh today. Um, so throughout the program, we're going to be taking questions from our students right here uh, in-house today. There were some students who were pre-selected who have a card in the back of the room. For those students, when I say it's time for a question, the next person is going to go up, stand right there at that microphone, state your name, the school you're from, and then go ahead and ask your question. If you do have a question, you come up with in the middle of the program. Find the Hall of Fame staff member. Uh, they'll probably be located in the back of the room. Tell them your question. If we say it's okay, we'll go ahead and we can see, uh, try and get that question in the program as well. If you're watching us on Facebook Live uh, and you have a question, submit your comment, put it in the comment section. We've got some staff watching through those comments as well and we'll do our best to make that as part of the program. So now I am proud to welcome a 14 season NFL vet, six time all pro, 51 career interceptions, five-time Pro Bowler and Hall of Famer, Mr. Donnie Schell. Welcome, sir. Welcome home. It's nice to meet you. All right, well, like I said, welcome to your second home back here in Canton, Ohio. Well, the second home is Pittsburgh. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's that fair. Third, Third home. home. There you Third go. home. There Third you home. Go. Um, <laughs> We'll start today, you know, those values I mentioned. Well, first off, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, I'm excited to, to hear some of your, your answers today, and I know our students uh, got a lot of black and gold out there uh, today, which I'm sure you enjoy seeing. Amen. <laughs> uh, but we're going to start today talking about those values I mentioned. Commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty. Uh, those five Hall of Fame values. I think I, think I pulled my <laughs> He was so excited to talk about him, he yanked his mic right off. Can you can go ahead and just clip it right on, on your, on your email, your jacket. Yeah, I can't see it. <laughs> Technical. We're full service here at the Hall of Fame. There we go. Oh, thank you very much. All right, so I know you're super excited. Commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty. Yeah, and even, we, even got notes. Out of those five values, is there one that stands out to you as more important than the others, or are they like a football team where they all kind of play together and have their own role? Yeah, I, I, I love all of them, um, but integrity stands out to me. Um, I, I, looked at, I looked it up in the dictionary. I looked all these words up. That's why I got my sheet here. I looked all these words up, and, and I wanted to give you the definition of it. It's just being honest. And then you need to find out uh, what that means to you. What it means to, to me is that you are who you are when no one is looking. That's, the, uh, that's my definition of integrity. And I think that's super important um, because that value alone, you know, you, there's, there's rules that you have to follow on and off the field. And even like you said, when no one's watching, you still have to abide by those rules because, you know, at your core, you may get away with this there and there, but at your core, you're going to feel like, oh, I, I did something wrong. Uh, hey, hey Amen. Um, you just got to be real. You got to be unique. You got to be authentic um, because people see through you. you be, don't, get, don't fall into the trap of you trying to trick people because they, 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 they'll, they'll laugh with you and joke with you and then they, uh, they go off and say, hey, yo, good job, whatever, and you, you're not being honest with them. He said, you know, when you get to their friend's house, he said, you know, I was talking to John the other day at, at, at this event and, and I, I found out that he didn't tell me the truth. So you look at those five, and obviously they're values that, that make football players great. You know, Hall of Famers have a bronze bust here in Canton, Ohio. But how did you take those values, maybe like a value integrity, and then use that off the field? How did those values translate from what you learned in the game to your everyday life off the field? 
it, it, it's very important for, for me to be honest and authentic. That's, and that's all uh, that's talking about, uh, uh, about having integrity. Uh, you just being honest and being authentic and being real. And um, it helps when you're trying to help talk to someone and, and give them instructions where you uh, I'm a I'm a teacher. I never taught in school, but that's my background in education. Uh, so people know when you communicate with them, are you authentic? Are you real or not? Because they can feel it. They can see it in your, your, your communication. Now, using those five values obviously makes you a great person off the field, on the field. But the, then, you know, the success on the field leads to you being in that spotlight. And, you know, we talk so much in, in football history about the, the Pittsburgh Steelers teams you played on, some of the best in NFL history. How are you able to kind of remain humble, uh, knowing, especially now, how regarded the, those teams you played on were? And all, all these are good. I see commitment, integrity, courage, take courage, um, respect, excellence. Uh, but one I like to throw in there that really helped me is, is perseverance. Um, I was a... Undrafted in 1974, I went undrafted uh, in the draft. I wasn't drafted. Um, and um, the Pittsburgh Steelers, not only that, I changed, I, I played linebacker in college and they switched me to defensive back. So I came to a team that was just beginning to, around the cusp of being great. And all these secondary had made, or uh, potentially would make uh, all pro. And that was a challenge to me coming in. I wanted to make the team, but the, to try to unseat somebody that that um, that been all pro before. So perseverance sticks out to me in my mind, and uh, that quality is persistent. I like this definition. I looked it up. Persisting in doing something despite difficulty, and especially this, or delay in achieving success. So when I went up there. I had to persevere, and the, I remember a warm reporter came in, coming to me and telling me, he said, uh, I'd like to do an interview with you, Mr. Shea. I said, yes. He asked me, he said, what do you think your chances and opportunity to make the team? He said, you're not very good because you're an undrafted free agent. You're not going to get as many chances. And um, boy, I, look, I looked at him, stared him straight in the eye. I said, uh, I don't know who you, where you get your information from, uh, but I think I have as good chances as anybody else uh, to make this team. And uh, it would end up being one of 13 rookies to make the team in, in 1974. So you have to persevere. Sometimes the Lord gives you different talents and abilities, and you don't have success right now. Don't quit. Don't give up. Because it, in me, if I would have quit, I would never would have uh, come into uh, being an a, a NFL player. Not only an NFL player, an NFL all-pro player. Because when I was in high school and college, and, and, um, and I started in every sport in high school, I played football and baseball in, in college, I never sat on the bench. When I got to Pittsburgh, uh, with the lights of Mel Blunt and uh, <laughs> J.T. Thomas and Mike Wagner back there being all pro, I had to sit down on the bench. So I, I, I said, Lord, what are you doing? I said, you know, I never sat on the bench in anything. He said, well, you're sitting down now. You need to learn. You need to, do, you need to do this. A lot of things he was teaching me. So don't be afraid of not starting it your first time or don't, not making the team your first time. And maybe the Lord is trying to teach you about perseverance and about the, your attitude. And what kind of attitude are you going to have if he delays that? Are you going to keep a positive attitude? So you mentioned a good point. You brought up the idea of perseverance. And, you know, the theme of the we usually try and theme our program this month is around persevering through adversity. Uh, February is Black History Month, so I want to talk a little bit about some of those Hall of Famers who, who paved the way for athletes like yourself. Uh, looking back at you know, the Forgotten Four, and two, of the, two of your fellow Hall of Famers, Marion Motley and Bill Willis, how important were they in your life uh, to, to make it to the NFL and then pave the way for yourself and all the great athletes who were to come after you? It, it was a great inspiration. Um, I've been this, it, was, it was a great responsibility, too. I saw that they had paved the way and what they stood for and what they did. And then when I made it, it was on my shoulders uh, to pave the way for others. So, you know, you're not only working for yourself, but you're working for somebody else who may come after you. So keep that in mind. All right. I think it's a great time to open questions for some of our students in here. So we're going to go back. Whoever's up first, go ahead. Step up to the microphone. Everybody's looking around like who's going to be first. All right, go ahead and step up to the microphone. State your name, 
uh, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. Welcome to the NFL moment. What was my, my the, what, what realized when you stood back and realized, all right, I made it. What was your what was that moment? Was it lining up and practice across from somebody? Was it finally stepping onto the field, being across from maybe a fellow Hall of Famer now? Uh, my welcome was, um, you, you know, they they told you back in the day you had to go to you stay in the hotel down. Uh, downtown Pittsburgh, and then you brought you, you you would come in, and they would tell you whether you made the team or not. So you, it automatically, I looked at my locker. If your locker and your name was still there, you know you kind of you, you kind of uh, made it. I think I think making that team as one of thirteen rookies um, uh, proved that I could do uh, what was in my heart. You know, sometimes you, you, uh, uh, the Lord put things in your heart uh, that you can do, and other, by, other people don't see it. But they kind of like the reporter told me I, I wasn't going to make it, but I knew in my heart that I was going to make it. So kind of proving the doubters wrong. Yeah. But although sometimes you got to go against the grain of, the, of what's true, and that was a true statement that he made to me, that most undrafted rookies don't get a lot of opportunity to practice, so you're not going to make the team. But I wasn't going for it. I didn't fall for it. So, so you got to go against the grain of, of what's true sometimes to accomplish your goals. You talk about that, and I think that's a great thing, you know, because there are there may be things some students in here are going through where they have to kind of get through it. How important was was it for you, and, and how did you, you know, take that moment that you know for a lot of people in the NFL it's kind of a realization, like you either make it or you don't. And then you know if you don't make it, there's that well, what am I going to do now? How did you kind of push through that moment? Did you rely on others, and how can students get through a situation like that now? Yeah, I think by setting goals and aspirations for yourself about what you want to be in life, you know, first of all, for me personally, I'm not talking about any other Hall of Famer, is putting God first in your life. That's me personally. And then setting goals for yourself. You got to set goals. And setting goals have a tendency to keep you on the right path. So when other people or other your peer groups come to you and actually do this or do that, was to say, no, I can't do that. Because that's happened to me in, my, in college. I was the first one in my generation to go to college. And the other, other friends come and ask me and say, well, let's cut class today, Don. Let's go downtown. I said, I can't do it. Because my goal is to finish school. And I can't afford to miss school or, or, or study. And I, I just can't do it. So it helps you uh, in preparing to say no to that person that wants you to do something wrong. All right, we're going to go to our next student in the back here. Go ahead and step up. State your name, the school you go to, and then ask your question here for Mr. Shell. I'm Trey Sean Foster, uh, from McKinley, and my question is, what is your favorite moment from your NFL career and why? I'm just fa what is your favorite moment from your NFL career? You got, if you had to pick one out of all the great moments, and then why would that be your favorite moment? Uh, making the team my rookie year. Uh, I, you, you know, you, you, if you don't make the team, I'm not sitting up here and, and telling you about what happened to me. But uh, making the team, and I think another moment was uh, winning the Super Bowl championship my rookie year. You know, we just got, just got done with the Super Bowl. Um, you know, everybody knows that's the biggest game of the year. Um, but for, you know, I never got a chance to play in a Super Bowl. I don't think anybody in here besides you got that chance. Um, how surreal is it to play in that game? What's a moment like walking out in the field? Is it as grand, grandiose as we see on TV? And what was the feeling for you, or did you try to like normalize it? Hey, it's just just another game for me. Well, I did try to normalize it, but then the, the media blows it up so much, so you, you, you don't know. You're not familiar with it, and you think it is the biggest game uh, ever. But um, I, when I got on the field and got introduced and went on the field, it was just another game. But you still had to. But it, but it, it was more valuable. You tell me you win this, you're world champions. So from that at that standpoint, um, uh, it, it was a huge game. While we're on the topic of Super Bowl, I want to talk about your, your great friend and, and fellow teammate now, Tony Dungy. Um, looking back on his career uh, and you following so close along with it, what was it like to see him win the Super Bowl and become the first African American head coach to do so? 
uh, it was great. And uh, if you don't know, Tony Dungy, we were, we were teammates, roommates uh, in the Steeler camp when his rookie year in 1977. It was great to have a relationship. And the thing I like about the Steel organization is that when you build a relationship, you just don't build a relationship about your career. Our relationship uh, spanned for over 40 years. Uh, and that's uh, the unique thing about that. And I was so happy that, uh, that he won. And another thing about Tony, Tony's kind of a, a humble guy, very low key. And they, they, and they put out the, the word on him that he, he wouldn't be a good coach because he's not a rah-rah and up in your face and, 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 and that nature. He was a teacher. And he stood by his convictions uh, and he, was, he ended up being a Super Bowl champion. Very cool. Also now a fellow Hall of Famer along with you. Yes. I'll go ahead for our next question there in the back. So go ahead, uh, whoever's up next, step up there to the microphone. And then go ahead and ask your question here for Mr. Shell. I like questions, so you get up, get up there and ask some questions. Hi, my name is Heather and I'm from Camelot. Um, the question is, is there a player in the game today that you think reminds you of the way you play? Is there a player in the game today that reminds you of, hey, that looks like Donnie Shell out there running around <laughs> in the defensive backfield? I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. But, um, is, there a player you, is there a player you enjoy watching? That's, that's, that's a good question. In, in my position or not, not my yeah. position? In, let's, let's start with your position. Is there, is there another safety out there you like watching play every Sunday? I'm, um, I have to be honest. I don't. I don't really know. <laughs> I haven't really analyzed that or just looked at it uh, from that standpoint. How has the game changed from when you played to to the to the game today? Well, my rookie year in 1974, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers averaged 15 passes a game, <laughs> and the running and it, it, it's involved now that they're throwing the ball 40 times or 50 times a game. Um, I think the rules and regulation of safety has changed it uh, somewhat for the better. So it's a little different than, than when you played there for the 70s and the, and the Steelers? It was a little more physical, a little more run, uh, run oriented and uh, less passing. All right, we'll take another question from our students there in the back. Go ahead and step up there to the microphone. Uh, like everybody else, state your name, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. So going through a rough time, how important is it to have a, a group around you that you can trust? It's, it's, it's very important. Um, my parents were, were my support group, but I had, I had some other support groups. Um, and, and sometimes you, don't, you, you may not uh, have your mom or your dad or your, or your dad or your mom, uh, and uh, you need other people. My teachers and especially my coaches so if anybody's in here as a coach or aspires to be a coach, uh, that's, that's a great calling, man. It's, it's a great influence because I want to be just like my high school coach. He cared about us, Coach Lefty Johnson. He used to ride me home in the afternoon and everything, tell me I can be the greatest player in college. I can go play college. And I told him, I said, yeah, now I'm brother and sister coach. I can always get something to eat off the table. He said, I can go to college. But he encouraged me. And... Um, when you're seeing somebody, um, a young person, um, you need to encourage them, and they got gifts and talents beyond athletics. Um, just encourage them in that. So you get to college, South Carolina State, uh, and HBCU, historically black college and university. What were your experiences like attending South Carolina State? Not only as a football player, but as a student as well. It, it was it was great. Uh, First, uh, because I came from an integrated school uh, in, in my hometown of Whitmire, and, uh, so I saw people that looked like me, <laughs> historical black college, and I uh, saw coaches, I saw teachers, I wanted to be a coach and a teacher, I saw Coach Jeffries, and I wanted to be uh, like him and when I grew up in my high school coach, uh, and it was great. It was great, uh, you had to build relationships with people, you had to talk and communicate with people. Uh, and it helped me a great deal uh, of going to South Carolina State. And, and made, as a matter of fact, it helped to make me the man that I am today. How important are the HBCUs? Not only how we look at them today, but throughout history, how important were those, um, you know, giving opportunities for athletes like yourself? It's, it's, uh, they're very important. 
Uh, you know, without HBCU, I probably wouldn't have uh, had an opportunity to go to college. Uh, and I ended up getting a uh, half scholarship in football, half in baseball, made a, a full scholarship. Ended up getting my degree. And when you get your degree, you, you create options for yourself. For those of you that don't know, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we are also home to the Black College Football Hall of Fame. If you got to tour uh, here before the program today, you might have seen that. Um, but for you, for, for a person who is now is in both Hall of Fames, correct? That's correct. The Black College Football Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. How important is it to see the Black College Football Hall of Fame housed here in Canton, Ohio, as well as the, the new Black College Football Hall of Fame weekend classic coming up here in September? Both of those events are, are, are very important to me because I never would have thought the Pro Football Hall of Fame will, would house the, the Black College Hall of Fame. Uh, that they mean that mean they they respect the history and, and what and what it stands for, um, and the classic that's coming up in September uh, that's great too. They're supporting that, and in the community, I met some community leaders uh, yesterday um, uh, through Adrian who works here at the Hall of Fame, and they're working behind the scenes to uh, create um, uh, financial support for students who go to historical black colleges and. Uh, Students or people who attend historical black colleges, are, they're very bright students. But most of us didn't have the financial means to get our college education. So, you know, they're, they're so important. You know, they just had the HBCU Legacy Bowl uh, down south. Um, you know, there's so much that's changing to, to make that a huge part of not only the sport of football, but society as a whole. So looking back on your career, would you have liked to, to maybe play in, in the, the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic here in Canton? or had the opportunities that the, that the Legacy Bowl gave the athletes this year? Yes, um, I think Doug and Shaq has, has done a great job uh, with the Black College uh, Football Hall of Fame and now the, the Legacy Bowl and giving players opportunities. Um, I think most people that come from historical black college just want an opportunity to show what they can do. Like you said, we got very smart, intelligent people at my school, we have so many uh, officers and colonels in, 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 uh, in the Army and the Air Force and, and different parts of the service that, that finish my school in generals. And it goes so, so it's not only succeeding in athletics, but, but truly everything else um, out there, no matter what the student might be interested in. Yes, uh, athletics, if you get an athletic scholarship, uh, that's just a stepping stone. And then the next thing is finishing school and getting your education. You know, playing two sports in, in, in college is hard. But my goal was to finish and finish on time, and I did that because that was important to me. So set your sights high, set them high. Don't be discouraged by other people, and surround yourself with people that can encourage you regarding your goals. Now, now, after your college career, after your football career, you now serve on the Board of Trustees at South Carolina State. Why was that an important thing for you to do? And um, why is it important to give back to your high school, your college, your, your pro cities? Why is it important to give back after your career? You know, once I looked over my life and looked back at my life, every area of my life, from childhood up through high school and college, people always came to my life and helped me and supported me. Um, it, I, I remember, uh, like I said, about my high school coach, Coach Leffy Johnson, taking me home at night. I remember that we couldn't afford to pay for our college, our high school ring. And my algebra teacher, Miss Baker, uh, it, it paid the money for my ring. As um, a matter of fact, <laughs> here's, here's a lesson for you on that one. She taught algebra. So I, I took algebra and took a test, and I was rushing through to get to practice. And she saw my score that I made on, on the test. And she came in study hall and grabbed me. She said, is Donna Shell in here? I said, I said yes, yeah, I am. She said, come here. She, took me in the office, this is important now, she took me in her office, sit me down, he said, you rushed through this test, didn't you? I said, yes, man, because I wanted to go to practice. I, I, I really apologize. He said, you made a 67, now you're a better student than that. You're going to take this test over right now. And I took it over and I made an 85. So that taught me to not be in a hurry, to do things, be patient, and, and do your work. All right, we're going to go back to uh, our students here for our next question. So whoever's next, go ahead and step up to the microphone. And again, state your name, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question here today for Mr. Shell. Uh, my name is Hannah. I'm from Asian Ripple. 
What is it like being a player with the terrible time to come and sample for the Steelers fan in 1975? Oh, it was awesome. They have them going and twirling and whirling. And, boy, I tell you, a sea of gold. It's very inspirational when you come out of the tunnel and, and get introduced and see all that sea of gold in Pittsburgh. And uh, I have to say, I know I'm in Cleveland, but Pittsburgh has the best fans uh, in the world. So I, I, I'm sorry, sorry, Cleveland Brownies. <laughs> you know, we talk so much about playing in an atmosphere like that and how much the fans matter. And I always think it's cool to ask people who've been in that situation, you know, when Renegade come, came on or when the towels started waving, what, what is that atmosphere like in the stadium? And do you, as a player, really feed off of that in, in the game? Oh, uh, without question. I remember, I think they, we were playing the Cleveland Browns and they, the, the stadium in the old, old Three Rivers Stadium, they made so much noise, I could not hear the signal when Jack Lambert called the coverage. And, uh, but that was a good thing because uh, that means the opponent can't, can't hear either. It, and it's true, and it's one of those symbols, you know, you have like, you know, Green Bay's got the cheese heads, you know, Pittsburgh has the terrible towel. As a player, what's it mean to see the city come together and surround themselves, you know, on something as simple as a yellow towel? Oh, it, it, it's great. It, it, Pittsburgh always been a, a, a people, hardworking people and community-minded people, and, and boy, I'll tell you, they love their Steelers, man. <laughs> Uh, they are, they're really committed, and, um, and they know their football, too. So if you didn't do well in the game, they'll talk about you. So you better, you better do well. A little extra added pressure, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to go back to another question from our students here. So whoever's next, go ahead and step up to the microphone. Go ahead and state your name, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question here for Mr. Schaub. Yeah, my name is Xavier Herbert. Uh, I go to East Cack and Maple Heights. And my question to you is, what does it mean to you to be considered one of the greatest safeties in the history of the NFL? Greatest, one of the greatest safeties ever. What's that mean? Oh, I, I, I mean, it's just, uh, it's amazing. You know, you, you don't, I didn't set my goals and sights uh, uh, to be the greatest safety ever, but I did uh, set my sights and goals of being uh, uh, the smartest safety and the best conditioned safety. And along with all the hard work, you, you know, everything just came, came together uh, regarding um, uh, the interceptions, the tackles, and uh, all the accolades that go with it. But um, uh, it, it's great. You know, coming in, uh, you mentioned you were undrafted free agent, you know, coming to a team full of greats. You know, in 1970s, the Pittsburgh Steelers, 13 Hall of Famers on that team. So what did it mean to you to be surrounded by that greatness every day? and walk into the building knowing, well, not knowing at that moment, but when it was all said and done that there would be 13 Hall of Famers on that one team. I, th I think it made me a better person and a better athlete because when you go against John Stallworth and Lynn Swan in practice it, uh, during the week, uh, the rest of the, 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 the opponents that you saw on the weekend, uh, they weren't as good as the people that you were practicing against. Oh, we, uh, uh, Joe Green and, and uh, Ernie Holmes over there. Franco Harris was the running back. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, a little behind the scenes, I'll share with you that people don't know how close we were off the field. So after the games, we would go to dinners and have dinners with, uh, with one another and uh, doing Thanksgiving. And to build that bond off the field is important also. Did you feel like you made each other better? Like going up against Lynn Swan, John Stallworth every day in practice, did that make you a better safety? Yes. And then prepare you for those big matchups on the weekends? Without question. Like I said, when you're going up against the best and you're practicing against them, you know, it, uh, it makes you better. Not only a better athlete, but a better person when you do a thing off the field with each other. And like I said before, I have a over 40 year relationship with John Stallworth and Franco Harris and, and, and Joe Green, those guys. So that, that's invaluable. How important is it to kind of have that, you know, in, in you know, in the business, is that work-life balance, but you know, a football-life balance? How important is that, to, you know, to kind of have those relationships off the field and build those friendships with your teammates and other people within the organization? It's important. It's important to build relationships and also to give back and help other people in the community. That's what I learned from the Steel organization. Uh, Mr. Art Rooney, the chief, we used to call him. He was always out in the community doing things and giving back and helping people. So uh, I, I saw a living example that I could emulate, and, and that was great. 
What are some of the things, you know, right after, you know, we always think players give back during their, during their careers at community events, but, you know, a lot of that give back happens after their career is over. What are some of the things you're doing out in the community now? I know you've got a great foundation. Uh, talk a little bit about that and the things you do with, with your foundation. It's, it's, it's the Donnie Shell Scholarship Foundation. My wife and I, Paul, Paulette, um, started about five years ago. When I became a member of the Board of Trustees at South Carolina State University, I saw that, that we had very intelligent uh, young people, but they didn't have the financial means to go to college. So we, st we started a foundation and, and to help and assist in that. And also we have a special needs. If they need clothing, if they need uh, travel to the internships, if they need computers, that we're able to uh, provide those things for them. Very, very cool. All right, we're going to go to our next student now in the back of the room. Go ahead and step up to the microphone. State your name, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question here today for Mr. Shell. Uh, my name is Mark Parker Jr. I'm from East Park, Maple Heights. My question is, you had a nickname Torpedo during your career. Where did you get that from? Where did the nickname Torpedo come from? Dwight White. Dwight White gave everybody a nickname. And, it, and I was walking in the locker room one day, and he, he, he said, hey, 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 chill, chill. No, no. From now on, you, you're the torpedo. <laughs> so that's why I got my nickname. Dwight called me that one day in the, in the locker room. He had the tendency to name, uh, give everybody nicknames. How important is it to have the, you know, you just mentioned talking about those relationships off the field. How important is it to be that close in the locker room? and be that close teammate, and does that lead to success on the field? And kind of related to maybe how students are in the classroom or with their own high school teams. Yeah, it, got to have a, uh, it, it helped us a great deal, because you know, it, it, like, uh, it, I had a question about support groups. We had different support groups. And uh, I remember I was going through a tough time. Uh, uh, I had hurt my knee, strained my medial collateral ligament and coming off an injury, and I got criticized in the media for not going 100%. So we was going to play the Denver Broncos on Monday Night Football, and John Cole, big old offensive lineman, he never says anything to anybody, walked across the locker room and, 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 um, and saw me. And he asked me this question. He said, uh, have, you ever, have you ever dedicated a, a game to the Lord or, or to God? I said, no, man. I played midget ball. I played high school. I played I'm in the pro. I ain't dedicated no game to the Lord. He said, you might want to do that tonight. And so, uh, so I did that. I, I went out and had one of the best games I ever, I ever had. But uh, that's the camaraderie that we had in relationship. Because if we hadn't had a relationship, he'd never come yeah, up to me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we're going to go to our next student in the back of the room here. Go ahead and step up, state your name again, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question uh, here today for Mr. Shell. I think it's going to be good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chance. Uh, I go to Maple Heights ECOT. My question for you is, if you didn't have football in your life at any point in your life, where do you see yourself now? Yeah, if I, if I didn't have football. Matter of fact, I never expired to play um, pro football. Uh, you know, going to college, that helped me to, to get my degree. I always wanted to be a teacher and a coach. That's, that was my aspiration. So I had my degree. I played two sports. And I had finished my degree before I went to, Pitt, to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So my goal was to come back and go to grad school and, and obtain my master's degree, that, which I did a couple years after. So I ended up having my finishing my degree, undergrad degree, and also I have my master's degree in counseling. Uh, we talked all, already about you know you're off the field, you know after your career starting your foundation. Um, you also spent some time working in player development uh, with with the NFL. How important was that for you, and what were you able to take away from those experiences that helped continue to build those values that, that you believe so much in? Yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was uh, hired as the director of player development in 1994 with the Carolina Panthers in Charlotte, North Carolina. And, that, and basically, I was uh, directing uh, the continue program, the internship program, the family assistance program. Uh, and all those programs were designed to help the, the players on the field and with life after sports. So, so what I tried to do, I, I tried to pour all my experiences back into those programs. Um, like when I played and after I played, and as I, was a, I became a, got married and had a family. So all those experiences I had experienced, 
I try to pour that back into the players and their family to encourage them to be the best that they can be. Awesome. All right, we're going to go back to our students now for our next question. Go ahead, Somebody step up, state your name, uh, your school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. My name is Jared. I go to Bishop Canada. My question is, do you feel as though you could have done anything better or different in your career? And could you have done anything better or different throughout your entire career? No, I started complaining my rookie year when I had to sit on the bench for three, three years. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, I wouldn't change that either because I learned so much about sitting down. Sometimes when you, you, you think you should be starting and, and you don't, don't get discouraged because I learned how to deal with the media. My locker was right beside Franco Harris and I learned a lot of different things from sitting there. It, it was it tough? Yes, it was tough because I never sat down until I came to, the, to Pittsburgh, but that gave me the ability to be patient and to wait. I think it worked out pretty well. You got a bronze bust, a gold jacket, and that, that fancy ring on there. So I say, I say it worked out pretty well. I, I agree. That's, <laughs> that's what this little way to do something. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to our, our next student question. Go ahead and step up, state your name, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. My name is Jose Black. Uh, I go to Bishop Canada. Who influenced you the most in your life, and how or why did that person do it? Who was your biggest influence throughout your life, and uh, why did they influence you? My parents. First, we come from a good home, didn't have very much material wise, but from a love standpoint, we had, we were not lacking. Uh, and the influence they had on me as I was growing up. Uh, and also, my coaches and teachers. So, if anybody's a teacher or a coach in here, you're in a very important position um, to influence young people in their lives. So, don't take it for granted. All right, we're going to keep rolling. Go ahead to our, ne our next student back there for our next question. Go ahead and uh, step up, state your name, and then your school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. My name is Keisha Long. I go to Fisher Academy High School. And my question is, besides being introduced to the Hall of Fame, what do you consider your greatest accomplishment was? Uh, outside of having all those, those cool things we just <laughs> talked about, what do you think your biggest accomplishment is? Uh, when I found my wife my sophomore year in college and married her and had my family. That area, because I love, I, the only thing I prayed for, two things I prayed for, is have a family and, and have a house. So I got a great wife and my high school coach, if, if anybody coaching out there, he told me, he said, well, Donnie, marry up. I said, what do you mean by that, coach? Marry somebody that can help you. So I, <laughs> I, have, a, I have a good partner for 45 years. So. Uh, we've talked we talk about things you've done after your career, you know, you, you're working with the Panthers there, your, your foundation and all the great work you're doing there, but there's that moment in your career where you have to realize, well, is it time to step away? When was that moment for you and did you really fight it? Was there a bunch of back and forth or did you really know it's like, all right, it's, it's time to end the career walk away? You, you know, when you get tired of eating the same food on the road, when you're on the road, on the road <laughs> and it doesn't taste well. <laughs> and then your body is telling you that you, you're not as fast as you used to be. Uh, but to have a support group, uh, John Stallworth and I, we, we, we helped each other with that. I told, I told John to look out for me and I'll look out for him. You see me getting uh, flowing down some, you let me know. But my, my last year, my 14th year in the league, and um, I think my desires began to change and I wanted to do something else. Um, you know, we, we stayed on the topic of, of being, you know, after your career is over, knowing that moment. You know, a lot of people, like, like we said, struggle with that. You know, they retire, then they unretire, then they go back and forth. But, you know, you see that, you know, you have the vision of what you're going to do. Um, and you mentioned the great Steelers teammates that you have. Playing for that organization, um, how important was it to stay your entire career with Pittsburgh um, and ultimately continue giving back to the, the organization and the city? Uh, it, it's important. Uh, I'm still connected. Um, Mr. Art Rooney, he still supported. I got my golf tournament that raises money for our scholarship and our foundation. Uh, we go back uh, on alumni weekends. Um, so I'm still connected uh, to Pittsburgh. And I think it's very important. It's also very important to build relationships wherever you go. And then you can always go back. You've talked a lot about your, your, your Pittsburgh teammates, but at South Carolina State, you had a teammate whose name was Harry Carson, who you are now teammates with here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Harry Carson had a great NFL career, led him here to the Hall of Fame. What was it like being teammates with him at South Carolina State and then coming full circle, 
when you were enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Uh, it, it was great. I was, I was so happy when, uh, when Harry uh, got elected to, uh, to fo Pro Football Hall of Fame. And also, he, he, was a, he was a defensive lineman, defensive end, and he switched into middle linebacker. Can you imagine somebody being 6'3", 250 pounds, uh, being a middle linebacker? <laughs> Cannot. <laughs> and, as a matter of fact, he ran a 4-5-40 when, when he got to the Giants. It's amazing. Great, great athlete. Um, did you learn anything from him before he left and you know, ultimately had his career in the NFL? And how did you take those lessons from a mentor like that and then uh, be able to do them yourself? Yes, Harris always dedicated. He's a dedicated, very intelligent uh, um, person and also an athlete. And uh, you learn, I learned commitment. He was committed. And that, that word committed means that mean you sold out, man. You, you're not going to have any reservations about what you're doing. And you're not going back on anything. You go, you stay focused, and, and you're in it for the hundred percent of the, of the time. Uh, a lot of great recognition throughout your career. We mentioned too being inducted here into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, as well as the Black College Football Hall of Fame. But you also have an award named after you, the Winston Shell Award, uh, talking about player development within the league. Why, why, why is it important to you to have your name on that? And how important is it to continue to look in the player development? Uh, for all the, the thousands of, of NFL players there are today? Well, I think it's very important. It's just representing what we did. We, it, we, uh, that um, Lamont Winston and I got that award that we cared about the, the players, uh, uh, not only on the football field, but the, when the transition in life after football. And uh, that was very important uh, to me. And um, it, it's good to give back. We were giving back. That's all we were doing, and giving back and encourage other people to be the best that you can be. All right, we got a few more students left here in the back, so whoever's next, go ahead, step up, state your name, the school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. My name is Aaron Edwards, and I go to Bishop Canyon. Who was the wide receiver of which offense that gave you the hardest time as a defensive back? Ooh. Who gave you the, who was the toughest man? Who took a little extra practice the week leading uh, up to the game? That's a good question. It was a bunch of them, because you know, I'm, a, I'm originally a safety, but in the, in the third down package, I became a cornerback, and I, I was in the slot. And I think the slot position is one of the most difficult positions to cover because the receiver gets about a yard and a half off the ball, and you can't jam him at the line of scrimmage. You got to let him come to you. Uh, oh man, Isaac Curtis, Cliff Branch, back in the day, uh, they, they were very fast and very fluent. Uh, they come to mind. They were very difficult to cover. Uh, we've talked a lot today about your experiences in Pittsburgh throughout your career, but I want to look a little bit at the team today. We look at a guy like Mike Tomlin, who's been with the league, been with the team. 15 years, winning season every year. How important is he not only for all of the head coaches in the league in Pittsburgh, but being one of an African-American head coach and having the success that he's had? Um, coach Thomas is a great person, first of all, and, and he's a great football coach. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, and he, he, he set a great example of, of how Brian Flores, mm -hmm. uh, given the, just the, that's the epitome of the Rooney Rule. They're giving up people an opportunity and another, uh, another chance to do what they do. Great head coach has had, a, like you said, 15 winning seasons, which is a record for, for most winning consecutive seasons. Um, hopefully he sticks around a little longer there in Pittsburgh. But looking at how he develops players, and you know, I, I personally think you, know, you look at him as somebody who develops not only great football players, but great individuals off the field as well. Being an alumni of the team, how important is it to kind of see that player development continue with the team today? Oh, well, of course, I think they call it player engagement now, and uh, they have a plethora of programs that you can, you, uh, for the players uh, now. And also, you, when you, once you retire, you can continue your education. They pay for your, if you haven't finished college, you can go back and get your college degree and get your master's degree. Also, for the former players, uh, they have a, what they call a trust, and you can do the same thing on, the, on the, that um, particular program. All right, I think we got one more student question in the back here, so we'll go ahead and take that. So go ahead and step up to the mic, state your name, school you go to, and then go ahead and ask your question. And then we'll, uh, we got a few more here, and then we'll wrap up. My name is Deshaun at Bishop Canavan. What lessons did you take from playing football, and how did you use them for your real life? Those lessons you took from football, and how did you apply those to your Yeah, to your life? And, and in counseling, we call those transferable skills. So um, I've, I've never given up. My rookie year, uh, they had a player strike, and we went six weeks or two-a-days. 
six weeks of tour days. It's a lot of practice. I, I played in some hot weather down in Orangeburg, South Carolina, with South Carolina State University. I know with six weeks of tour days. So it taught me not to give up. It taught me to go against the grain of what's true sometimes. When they remember the poor asking me about the question about you're not going to be able to make us a free agent. And this taught me uh, about perseverance. All right, so that's all the questions we have for students. I got some more here before we, before we wrap up. Um, we, you talked a little bit about your experiences in high school and being a multi-sport athlete. How important was that for your athletic development? And how did playing baseball help you in football? How did playing football help you in baseball? And how did you take those transferable skills and apply them to your athletic career? What, uh, baseball, you have to have great hand-eye coordination. Um, and that helped me um, in seeing the baseball. You got to see the baseball to hit the baseball. So that helped me. It helped me regarding intercepting the ball because you got to have the same, it's the same skills. Um, regarding uh, perseverance and, and, and never giving up, uh, that's been the theme of my life. You know, I always went through things and had to go through things and, um, uh, and had to not give up and rely on other people. But the thing about going through, you always, I always had a ram in the bush that people come out and help and they supported me and encouraged me. They told me I could do it, and but I, I didn't believe I could do it myself. So it's important to encourage not only uh, get encouraged from other people like coaches and teachers, and for you to be encouraged. You know, you can be an encouraged to someone else in your age group. A couple more questions here. Class of 2020 here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame gets announced. What was it like to get that call to, um, to know that you were going to be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame? My wife told me when I came up here, don't be talking so much. <laughs> and and I'm not, <laughs> I was lost for words. That's the first time I've ever been lost for words and had to pause and, and gather my thoughts. Uh, it was just amazing. Uh, I thought about all the waiting and, uh, and, and, and waiting for this moment and, and what you go through in doing that. And then when you go through things, you're waiting on something, it also is important to keep the right attitude. Because sometimes the, the test is for, uh, well, is he going to keep the right attitude? Is he going to be, uh, 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 this is going to affect him? Is it going to affect him how you treat other people because you're waiting on something that you, that you want, you want uh, real bad? And uh, that really helped me to wait. All right, last question in the program here today, and we've talked about so many great things that, you know, that these students can take away from today. But if we had to sum everything up today and you wanted these students to walk away with one thing to remember, one piece of advice, what would that final piece of advice or, or information two, be? Two, 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 two's fine, two's fine. <laughs> remember what I said, put God first in everything you do and set goals, and your first goal should be to get your college education or a technical degree or a certificate. Easy as that. All right, let's give a round of applause for Mr. Dye Show. Here today. So, Mr. Shell, I again want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to come here today, your third home uh, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, and thank you for being a part of our Hall of a Hall of Famer series. So, again, everybody, let's give Donnie Shell one thank last round so of applause. Thank you, everybody.